Today we're going to make two types of pineapple flavoring essence. We're going to make a legal one and we're going to make an illegal one. It's illegal because of this ingredient, but it was pretty common back at the soda fountains back in the 1800s. So I'm going to make it and try it today, but I'm also going to give you a proper recipe that you can use today. And you can use these for a lot of different purposes. You can obviously make soda with it, but you can also use it as like bitters to enhance the pineapple flavor of a pineapple cocktail if you want. So whether you're making a jungle bird and you want a little bit more pineapple out of it, this might be for you. So let's get started. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. If you read any history on the soda fountain, you'll know that pineapple was a really popular flavor, probably top three for you know somewhere between 1880 and the 1900s. And the reason for this were threefold. One, it's exotic and unique, much like people exploring tiki drinks today. They have this kind of taste of place, you know, especially in North America where we don't really grow a lot of pineapples. It just had an exotic taste that was just kind of an attraction for a lot of people. Second, it works really well with vanilla. And if you go through old recipe books at the Soda Fountain, you'll find that the pineapple and vanilla combination was quite popular and it may have actually been one of the original recipes for the original milkshake. So back in the 1880s. And third of all, you don't even need a real pineapple to make it. And before refrigeration, obviously bringing a pineapple from the Philippines all the way across the Pacific Ocean to somewhere in Pittsburgh, let's say, was a little bit of a pain. And so this idea that transportation and reliable refrigeration didn't exist so you could just make it using chemicals. Now they're flavors and you can get them all natural today. But back then artificial flavors did have the edge just because it's easier to make. Now, as I mentioned, most of that flavor was somewhat, well, we can't make it today because of this ingredient. I'll talk about this after I show you this one. What actually happened is people started preferring the artificial flavor once natural flavors came around. So once you could ship pineapples reliably, People still like the artificial flavor. Now this is an all natural flavor, but I've tasted some that use artificial flavors. And depending on how you develop it, it can be either a very single note or it could be more rounded. So in the perfume world, you've got high notes and base notes and middle notes. And that's what this is gonna be today. This original formula, the illegal one, use basically four or five ingredients. So this one's a little more rounded and would be good if, again, if you wanna use them in place of bitters. So add some flavorings. You can get all these ingredients all natural. You just have to order them that way. It's actually really simple to do. And if you have, if you're an aspiring flavorist, this is a good starting point for you to explore things. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make it. So the first starting point is we're gonna make it alcoholic. Uh, you can make non-alcoholic ones, but today, just going with alcohol. Anytime you're making an alcohol-based essence, you're going to need somewhere between 60 and 70% ABV alcohol. So this is 65%, it's kind of the sweet spot. And you're probably gonna need somewhere around 100 mils, 110 mils. This is making a 120 mil formulation. So you don't wanna fill this up, but we're going to add our flavorings into it. And then we, when we bottle it in our 120 mil bottle, we'll top up with the alcohol. So the primary flavor in almost all pineapple is amyl butyrate, and that's an ester. And it's basically, when you smell it, it's pineapple. Well, pineapple and apple, oddly. Again, with esters, when they're in full concentration, they're hard to describe, but they tend to be sweet and fruity. And this is where this comes from. And that sweet fruity nature, again, is pineapple. Now, because this is our primary one, we're gonna add four mils of this. This is a three mil pipette. So that's our first four mils. The second ingredient is a related compound to amyl butyrate, and that's ethyl butyrate. And again, another ester. We're only gonna need three mils of this. And obviously you can start Having that stir a little bit. The next ingredient is ethyl propionate. Again, another ester. And we're only adding one mil of this. They all have varying degrees of pineappleness. So they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily smell like pineapple when you smell each one individually. But as you start to combine them, they all start to gain this pineapple esque flavor. Now, it is probably more artificially pineapple. 
just because of the nature of this. That is just a fact. But the more ingredients you add, so you're rounding out the flavor, you're gonna get farther away from that single note pineapple element. So now the next one is isoamyl acetate. Again, another ester. Most people know this as banana oil or banana flavoring. But you can usually get it in the grocery store. It's pretty common. And we're just gonna add one mil of this. Again, we don't want it to be banana. We do want more of those fruity esters to round out that pineapple element. And then ethyl acetate. This is kind of a really simple ester. It's very light and perfume. You'd probably call it a top note and fruitiness. And again, one mil of this. And those are your primary five ingredients. They're gonna give you something pineapple-esque. Yeah, it's a really strong, fruity, pineapple-y note. So, but what we're gonna do is round it out. And even back at the soda fountains, they rounded it out. One thing they often added was acetic acid. Now this is 7% pickling vinegar. So acetic acid and vinegar are the same thing. We're just gonna add one mil of this. And you can add more, again, if you're into doing your own flavors, this is a great way to figure things out. You just work with things, you can add more or less, depending on how you want this to come out. Now that does make a difference when you add the acetic acid. It kind of tempers down some of that sweetness and gives it a little more oomph, I guess would be the word for it. Now for this, we need two drops of lemon oil. And if you get three drops in, again, it's always fine. You're not gonna go over, it's not all of a sudden gonna become very lemony. Those are actually the ingredients that I found in old recipes. Those are the primary ingredients. Vanilla is one of those ones that you will find in the recipe as well. They often called it, use it as a fixative. Ethyl maltol works. So when you get a really ripe, ripe pineapple, it tends to have like, um, caramel note to it. So ethyl maltol will give you that and some additional sweetness. So you can use ethyl vanillin or ethyl vanillin, depending on where you're from and how you call it. But this works well as a fixative as well, much stronger than the, the vanillin here. But beyond that, you can start adding whatever flavors you want. So ethyl cinnamate, I've seen in some research papers, regarding chemical analysis of pineapple aroma. Two drops and ethyl cinnamate, if you haven't guessed, kind of has a cinnamon aroma. You don't need to add it, it's optional. It's just kind of playing around with flavors. I, isobutavan is a vanilla-esque aroma. It's got a really nice aroma to it. Sometimes people use it as fixative. It is quite thick. So I'm just gonna add a couple globs of it because it uh, comes screaming out in an interesting way. All of these ingredients are going to create something, again, in concentration, it's always hard, but it is very aromatic, but I could see the pineapple in it. And then other ingredients, you can add geranol, which will give it a floral note, and gamma octalactone, which is another ester and it has a coconut aroma. So, so these are just some of the chemicals you find in it. But the other one, and the last one is decanal. We use this in the orange soda video. It does have a, a lot of pineapple seems to have decanal in it or octanal, which is another one of the compounds. So you can use this if you want, uh, but I put lemon oil in, so it'll be fine. So anyway, that is your essence. Now just let it stir. As you can see, these esters tend to dissolve in this amount of alcohol really well. You could probably use vodka if that's all you have access to with these types of esters because they are partially water soluble. Typically when you're doing an essence, 65% is what you want. You can get away with 40%, though sometimes it may cause some haze. While we have this, I'm going to make the illegal formulation for you. So let's make the illegal formulation. And there are two ingredients that cause problems. The first is chloroform. Now the chloroform is only used in a very small amount. I will be tasting it. Again, they used to use it as an anesthetic, but it's no longer approved for food use for good reasons. It does have a very light aromatic aroma. Not sure where they get pineapple from it, but if you look for old recipes from the 1870s all the way up until the 1900s, chloroform does seem to find its way in there. 
and obviously came out during the Pure Food and Drug Act. This one only requires one milliliter of chloroform. Now the second ingredient that causes formulation issues is acetyl aldehyde. It's still technically approved for food use, but re at really, really low levels, but it is believed to be carcinogenic, though in high amounts. Now the reason uh, we figured that out is that if you hear that alcohol is bad for you and alcohol may cause cancer, it's because your body converts ethanol, which is the alcohol, into acetyl aldehyde, which is then converted into acetic acid. The, the problem is, is that if you get too much of this in your system continuously, so if you're a chronic drinker, you'll always have this in your body and it does cause problems. Though I don't think it's not allowed for beverages, but it is kind of heavily regulated and kind of, you don't see a lot of it available. It was really hard for me to find this amount. So it's not something that you're gonna see a lot of on the market. And you technically don't really need it. It's kind of got, um, you may know it from wine and beer. It's kind of got this sharp, they say green apple, but it's kind of a solvent aroma. You only need one mil of it in there. The other ingredients are basically the same as our other ones. So amyl butyrate is the core of it. And we need 10 mils of that. So this is actually quite a, uh, lot compared to what we did before. And then obviously ethyl butyrate. And we need five mils of this. And then it says three mils of glycerin. This probably acts more of a fixative than anything else. So much like I was mentioning earlier that vanilla is often used as a fixative. This is probably used as a fixative to fix those light aromatic flavors. And then the last ingredient is just alcohol, and we're gonna bring it up to the 120 mil mark, same as our other formulation, and that would be it. And yeah, it does actually have a good pineapple aroma. This one seems really strong, whereas this one seems more delicate. Back then, obviously, pharmacists being chemists, they were flavorous, they did a lot of things. They were really good at making formulas. Remember all of these, all of the formulas you see today, whether it's strawberry or raspberry, most of these were created back in the 1800s and they just did it by sense of smell, no analytical equipment. Anyway, what we'll do is I will mix these up with some more alcohol, get them into some simple syrup and then we will taste them. So now that we have our pineapple flavoring essences bottled up, one of these four ounce bottles will make roughly eight to 16 liters of syrup. Depending on whether you use one ounce or 30 mils of this in two to four liters of syrup. Historically kind of the numbers and when you look at what you're allowed flavor wise to put into a drink, that works out. Then you'd use one to one and a half ounces of the syrup to make a soda or you could use single drops of these, probably dilute it a little more if you're doing um, kind of a bitters or a flavoring type thing for cocktails. So you might wanna double the volume of alcohol. And again, if you're going to play around with this stuff, do play around with it, figure it out, see what works best. I'm going to make a couple 200 milliliter samples of these using one and a half mils of our essence and 200 mils of simple syrup, and then that will give us the appropriate flavor ratio. So now that I've got these made up, let's give them a try. I will try the legal version first. Now, yeah, that's, it's pineapple. It does need some acid. Again, these are just the syrups, so they need something to balance out the sweetness, but it is definitely a pineapple flavor, kind of the candy side of the flavor. That just might be the sweetness of it. But I could see this working well in a soda if you really like that kind of, I don't want to say it, but it is kind of an artificial pineapple flavor. It's not going to be like pineapple juice, but hey, that was the point of this, is that we are making an artificial flavor. And if you kind of like that flavor, I, I wouldn't say it's too different than this, uh, though this is all natural. But again, you can buy all these ingredients naturally and still make an all natural product. Now let's try the chloroform one. Just... Now I have to say it, this one's better. It has a sharper flavor, probably from the chloroform and acetyl aldehyde, because those are basically the only two ingredients that are different. And it has, like the lingering, there is almost a spiciness to it. 
And I suspect, again, that's chloroform kind of tingling my tongue at the moment. There's only one and a half mils of the total essence in here. There's a very small amount of chloroform. It's an interesting flavor. I could see most people thinking this is the better flavor. However, we can't make it. They did a pretty good job of making these flavors, and I could see why this was popular. Again, it's still not true pineapple, but it has that definitely a pineapple flavor. It's got, again, a little bit more spiciness. I could see adding acid to this, so making a soda with it. But again, you know, this one is not bad. It's definitely less amyl butyrate and ethyl butyrate than this one, but it tastes more, and it may be from the combination of ingredients. There's actually more flavor in this one than there is in this one. This one seems more balanced, even though it has more of the amyl and ethyl butyrate than this one. In fact, this one has more of the total amount of flavor compounds in it than this one. And this one comes across as more flavorful. So there's an interesting dynamic, it's the chemistry of it. And this is where, if you really get into making flavors, it's fun to play with. I don't recommend playing with chloroform. It's actually kind of hard to get. There's just so much you could do. Now, this is just one sample of my flavoring compounds. And you could kind of experiment with this infinitely. Just like a painter mixes paints to get a very specific color, you can do the same thing with all of these different ingredients. And you can just actually eventually paint yourself the perfect pineapple flavoring. But that's up to you. This is the starting point. Take it a little further. And if you ever come up with something really great, you know, you don't have to give me the formula, but let me know. I, I like to hear the people using this stuff. So anyway, that's pineapple flavoring essences. So if you have questions, post them below or check me out on Patreon. And I will see you in the next video.